Hello everyone who follows ZWO, my name is Nico Carver and I'm here at the ZWO headquarters in Suzhou and I'm very excited to be interviewed. So my astrophotography experience began in 2014 before I knew what that word meant. Uh, I was in Iceland on vacation and just with my DSLR and lens and I saw and photographed the Aurora Borealis which are these brilliant green lights in the night sky. And uh, when I came home, I took one of the pictures and I brightened it and I saw all these other colors come out and that's what really hooked me on astrophotography. After that, I started doing more Milky Way capturing and um, in the next year. And then about a year after uh, Iceland and the Aurora, I took my first deep sky picture, again just with the DSLR and lens. But uh, I was amazed that you could capture a nebula from just a city sky. And so that's what really hooked me was seeing the Orion Nebula. And from there, I just started devoting a lot of hours to astrophotography. And I got involved with my local club, uh, the Delaware Astronomical Society. I used a DSLR for maybe uh, a year uh, after I started deep sky imaging. Um, but. I knew that it was, there were certain deep sky objects that I couldn't capture well with just my DSLR from the city. And so I wanted to try narrowband imaging. And at that time, it was before um, these dual narrowband filters were out for color cameras. So I went right into mono imaging. And uh, I asked my club members what they used, and a lot of them were using uh, CCD uh, sensors. But I had seen that uh, ZWO had just released the ASI 1600mm cool and uh, it was already getting some good reviews and, people, and I'd saw, seen some images online of people using it and so I tried it and I was really happy with that camera and uh, I paired it with camera lenses. So I took the ASI 1600mm cool and the filter wheel and you already had an adapter out for connecting to Canon EF uh, lenses and so I was just very happy with that because I could capture large objects like uh, the Spaghetti Nebula and the Squid Nebula. For the longest time, well basically I've always been a backyard imager until quite recently. So I started in um, Newark, Delaware uh, on the east coast of the United States and I was there for five years and then I went to Boston for two years. So both of these are very light polluted places. And then only recently, when I started going full-time on YouTube, I could move anywhere. And so I moved to rural New Hampshire, where it's much darker. Um, and that's nice for YouTube, because I can get more done under the dark skies. Um, but for the first uh, eight years of my astrophotography journey, I was shooting from very light polluted city skies. So I do know the pain for other uh, city imagers, and uh, I know how it, you know, it there's a lot of difficulties with light pollution, um, but also in the United States, uh, we actually have it better than a lot of countries because in a lot of countries, even if you drive <laughs> three, four hours, you're still not out of light pollution. Well, in most places in the United States, if you drive a couple hours, uh, you actually can get to a pretty dark sky. Uh, in Delaware, I was uh, often imaging in state parks and uh, I remember uh, one time the, I went into the state park and then when I tried to get back out, they had locked me in the park. So they had they'd taken the gate and they took a big lock and they locked me inside. And so I was a little bit uh, afraid that I would just be permanently stuck in there. <laughs> but then um, the next morning around maybe 10 a.m., uh, there was a park range, I found a park ranger and they let me back out. But that was sort of a funny time. And then I've also just had many experiences with wildlife. A lot of times people ask me like, have you encountered bears and other things? And I've, I have, like at night been as close as to you to a, a big bear, <laughs> it's sort of scary. But um, most animals don't actually want to harm you. So if you just stand your ground and uh, you'll be okay. Challenging thing is, is often just uh, learning things because you, or trying new things, right? Because sometimes you'll try something new and it won't work out for a very long time, like maybe several months. 
and it can be discouraging to just keep trying but it's not working. Um, so for instance, when I first tried using a Newtonian telescope for astrophotography, I tried for many months and I never was happy with the results. And so I gave up uh, and just went back to just using refractors and only recently tried Newtonians again. So I'd say that sometimes if you get frustrated with one path in astrophotography, maybe it's best just to pick a different path and then later when you get more experience, you can come back to something. I think today it's more possible to learn from YouTube. When ICE was first starting, um, there was a good book out already um, by a U.S. author named Charles Bracken called uh, Deep Sky Imaging Primer. So I learned a lot from that book. And then uh, the, the other big way to learn back then was Reddit and um, Cloudy Nights Forum. But I think now there is more opportunity to learn things from YouTube. There's a lot more uh, complete tutorials out there. Like if you want to learn uh, a piece of software, it's, it's much more possible uh, today with video, if that's what you prefer. Some people still like reading, so I'm glad that there are still books and blogs as well. So I think my favorite is still the Spaghetti Nebula. Um, it's a large supernova remnant in Taurus, and I just really like the shape of it and how much detail there is in it. And that's uh, one that you can do with narrowband filters. It's too dim to see through the telescope, but you can do it with photographs. Uh, but recently I've also really come to like uh, dark nebulae, these ones that are just made out of dust. And those you really need a dark sky to shoot from. So I think that's the reason I've only recently started uh, liking those more is because now I live under a dark sky. Many I do shoot every year. Like um, my favorite constellations are Cepheus and Cygnus. And I will go back and shoot things in those constellations again and again. Um, Another favorite of mine is the Squid Nebula, and I first shot that in 2017, and then I re shot it again in 2023. So sometimes not every year, I'll like give myself a few years and then see how much I've improved. I have one mosaic image, so it's not, it's uh, 20 something panels. There was 200 and, I don't remember, 200, over 200 hours. Uh, but for a single image, I think I've done now a couple that are over a hundred hours.